Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. I was recently made aware that on November 15th, the USDA announced that they made some updates to the plant hardiness zone map. I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to talk about what the map is and take a look at the new map along with the press release from the USDA regarding some of the changes to the map. If you are unfamiliar with what the plant hardiness zone map is, I'll take a moment and explain what it is and how it's used. If you've been around gardening or growing, you probably have heard people refer to which zone they are in. The United States Department of Agriculture developed a standardized zone map to help people determine which plants are most likely to grow well based on the area that they live. The numbers displayed on the map are the average annual minimum temperatures in Fahrenheit. The zones range from 1A in Alaska all the way up to 13B in Puerto Rico. Before this update, the last update to this map was in 2012. That all changes now as the new map has just been recently released. We're going to take a look at their press release and see the new map and see some of the changes that the USDA has made. Each zone has a 10 degree Fahrenheit range. These zones are all split up into two parts, A and B. This is why you'll oftentimes hear people refer to being in zone 6A, for example, or maybe 9B, for example. These ranges will help people understand which perennials they can grow in their area. It's not a good idea to get a new plant unless you know which zone it likes and which zone you belong to. Some plants just can't handle the lower average temperatures. In the world of carnivorous plants, this information can be really useful. Carnivorous plants range from tropical to cold hardy perennials. Understanding the zone in which they thrive can be a good starting point when determining which carnivorous plants will be easiest to grow in your area. Knowing your plant hardiness zone is a great starting point, but there are other factors you should know before committing to a plant. The zone map does not help you with summer temperatures, daylight hours, or length of the frost season. Two places can have the same average low temperatures, but are wildly different temperatures and daylight hour ranges in the summer. All of these things should be considered when buying a new carnivorous plant or really any other kind of plant for that matter. Now that you have a better idea of what the plant hardiness zone map is, let's talk about the map that's been released. Let's jump over to the USDA's press release and go over some of their updates. All right, and real quick before we jump over and check out the new plant hardiness map for 2023, check out how you can get your hands on your very own carnivorous plants. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. All right, so here we are over at the USDA website, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and this is the actual press release here. This first paragraph here, I've kind of read over this. It just kind of talks a little bit about what the plant hardiness zone map is. So nothing really too exciting here. We've kind of gone over most of this already going down a little bit. You can see it is available online here. This is the link to the actual map. I'll have the link to this press release and the link to this map in the description. So if you want to check that out, everything is down there for you. In addition to the map updates, the Plant Hardiness Zone map website was expanded in 2023 to include the tips for growers section, which is pretty cool. So that I'm going to jump over to the map real quick and show you what that looks like. So down here, we got tips for growers. So just some extra information, how to use the maps. All right. And if you are finding this content useful or helpful, please make sure and pour some water on my like button and really help my channel grow. I'm trying so hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. And you being here is really helping you guys subscribing to my channel, liking the video, commenting, asking questions, watching the video all the way to the end. Just general interactions really, really helps me out. So I really, really appreciate you being here. Let's go ahead and get back to the, the content you're here for. The 2023 map is based on 30 year averages of the lowest annual winter temperatures at specific locations. And like we talked about earlier, it's divided into 10 degree Fahrenheit zones and further divided into five degree Fahrenheit half zones. That's the B and the A. Like the 2012 map, the 2023 web version offers geographical information system or GIS based interactive format and is specifically designed to be user friendly. Notably, the 2023 map delivers to, to users several new significant features and advantages or advances. I'm sorry. The 2023 map incorporates data from 13,412 weather stations compared to the 7,000 
983 that were used for the 2012 map. So you can see there's a significant advantage here to the, the 2023 map. Uh, almost twice the amount of weather stations used to gather data for these average low temperatures. So that's, that's really cool. Furthermore, the new maps rendering for Alaska is now much more detailed resolution down from six and a fourth square mile area to a fourth square mile area. So if you live in Alaska, that's really good news for you. You'll be able to zoom in and get a lot more detail on the map. So the sixth paragraph just kind of talks a little bit about how it's used for research. Uh, like for example, at the bottom, scientists incorporate the plant hardiness zones and data layer in many research models, such as those model modeling the spread of exotic weeds and insects. So it's really useful. This map is for people doing a lot of research on, on different things. So it's just another a little statement there. The plant hardiness zone designations represent what's known as the average annual extreme minimum temperature. At a given location during the particular time, 30 years in this instance, put another way, the designations do not reflect the coldest it has ever been or ever will be at a specific location, but simply the average lowest winter temperature for the location over a specified time. Low temperature during the winter is a crucial factor in the survival of plants at specific locations. So it's just really calling out that it's not the lowest it's ever been. It's not saying that it's never been lower than those temperatures there. It's just taking the average of those low temperatures. As with the 2012 map, the new version has 13 zones across the United States and its territories. Each zone is broken into half zones. We already talked about this. When compared to the 2012 map, the 2023 version reveals that about half the country shifted to the next warmer half zone. And the other half of the country remained the same half zone. The shift to the next warmer half zone means that these areas warmed somewhere in the range of 0 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. However, some locations experienced warming in the range of 0 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit without moving to the other half zone. That's a really interesting call out because it really gives you kind of an idea of why they needed to update this map. I mean, if half of the people were affected and are changing zones, it's really important to update this so that people are getting the most current information regarding what zone that they're in. These national differences in zonal boundaries are mostly a re result of incorporating temperatures data from a more recent time period. The 2023 map includes data measured at weather stations from 91 to 2020. Notably, the 2023 map for Alaska is warmer than the 2012 version. That's mainly because the new map uses more data representing the state's mountain regions where during winter, warm air overlies cold air that settles into low elevation valleys, creating warmer temperatures. So this is a really good call out too. It's saying that it's not necessarily that there's anything really different necessarily about the temperatures and the weather. It's saying that, that a lot of it could be that there's just so much more data collected and it's going to be more accurate now. So it's not to say there's big, big changes, but more data points means more accurate data. So that's that's another good, really, really good call out. And another reason that it's good that they they updated the zone from the, the 2012 to the 2023. The annual extreme minimum temperatures represent the coldest night of the year, which can be highly variable from year to year, depending on local weather patterns. Some changes in zonal boundaries are also the result of using increasingly sophisticated mapping methods and the inclusion of data from more weather stations. So another, it's kind of calling out again here that it's just, in some instances, it's going to be more accurate rather than radically different than it was. This is really important too. Temperature updates to plant hardiness zones are not necessarily reflective of global climate change because of the highly variable nature of the extreme minimum temperatures of the year, as well as the use of increasingly sophisticated mapping methods and the inclusion of data from more weather stations. Consequently, map developers involved in the project cautioned against attributing temperature updates made to some zones as reliable and accurate indications of global climate change, which is usually based on trends overall averages temperatures recorded over long periods. This is a really, really good call out. I think this is super important because I've already seen some people saying that they're calling global warming and the reason that the temperatures are going up by five degrees is because of, of global warming. And that's not necessarily what is going on here. Uh, a lot of this is just, it's they've got a lot more sophisticated data. They've got a lot more data points. So they're able to, to more accurately reflect what temperatures are in different zones. And that's more of a reason that these changes are happening than necessarily any type of global changes in weather patterns. Let's jump over to the map and take a look and I'll kind of show you how it works and how to use it a little bit here. So the map is great. So you can start by entering the zip code. Let's do zip code close to where I live here. That's Spokane, Washington. You can put in your zip code and there we go. It'll take you to that area. And you can see the map is pretty detailed here. So you can see this looks like a zone seven, seven A. If we zoom out a little bit, we'll see that it's got some 
areas of 6b here and I bet if we pull out we'll see some areas of 6a so you can actually get right down to where you live specifically to see exactly what zone that you're in over here you can see these are the the 10 degree temperature ranges or I'm sorry five degree temperature ranges each zone has 10 so there's two a 1a a 1b so this would be negative 60 degrees to negative 50 degrees in in zone one ranging from a to b so let's take a look here you can also put in I believe you can put your city in too let's see what that does here yep Spokane Washington so the same thing kind of brings us in there and you can zoom out you can zoom in you can zoom way out if you'd like and go to any part of the country and go over to New York here and take a look and you see the different counties that can be really useful you can you can go over to Alaska and now it sounds like we have way more good data on Alaska so we can probably zoom in better in some of these here's Juneau let's take a look so there's Juneau Alaska you can see the data points here you can clearly see kind of where anything is and based on Let's go over to Anchorage here and take a look and see how Anchorage looks. Very similar. You see we got a 5B, 5A, a 4B here. So it kind of there's a lot of different in a small area there in Alaska. But there's Alaska. I believe that we can return to the US. So we go to Hawaii if we want. If you're interested to see what the zones are in Hawaii, Puerto Rico, you can see we got some some high zones some 13 to 11 it's going to be hard to grow a lot of those perennials uh especially the ones that are looking for that cold dormancy there like the our uh, deer venus flytrap would be tough to grow in puerto rico but so that's that's kind of the new map and that's some of the changes as indicated by the usda definitely want to bookmark this map and so that you can reference it or at least memorize which zone that you're in so make sure and check in those plants to see which zones they thrive in so you can make sure you're you're getting the plants that have the best chance for surviving in your area just remember to check those other things like the daylight time the the time in which there's frost you want to make sure that it's that the frost isn't going to be too much for that plant and then also the summertime temperatures, like if you live in Arizona or something, you want to make sure that your summertime temperatures are reasonable enough to where your plant will survive also during the summertime. So all things you want to consider, but this does give you a really good starting point when you're looking at perennials. So you can identify which zone that you're in and kind of start from there. And that's probably your, your best place to start. But thanks so much for checking this out. Uh, make sure and go check out my channel. If you're interested in carnivorous plants, there's all kinds of cool carnivorous plant videos there. Anything from Venus flytraps to sundews to pings to nepenthes, pitcher plants, all kinds of stuff. Go check it out. Uh, carnivorous plants are super interesting, and I, I strongly invite you to go check out my channel and some of which it has to offer. Thank you, and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.